Hey, come on in. I'm coming. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning to the children of the most high. Good morning, come on in. Good morning, yeah. It's a great day. Bless the Lord for this day. Bless the Lord you woke up today. Bless the Lord your family woke up today. Yeah, yeah. Bless the Lord, we woke up today, clap and sing with me. Thank you, Father Yahweh, Mother and Yahshua, for waking us up today. Yeah, yeah. No matter what we're going through, thank God you woke up. No matter how you feel, you think God you woke up. No matter what you're going through, even if your money acting funny, thank the Lord that you woke up. Husband acting up Wifey don't know what to do Children going crazy Thank the Lord You woke up today Come on, shake them shoulders with me Clap, 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 clap them hands Thank you, Father <laughs> How y'all doing today? <laughs> it's a nice day here in Georgia 78 degrees is supposed to be today Yay! <laughs> How y'all doing? So I said, let me get out some of my spring hats, my rims. What, what? <laughs> uh, how y'all doing? Yes, great morning. Hello, James. Hi, Margie. Hi, sis Alicia. Hi, Dewana. Hi, Julian and Tanisha. What's up, Alan? <laughs> Who's that? Mar Marco, Angie, <laughs> stylish. Yeah, I got on spring colors today, white and beige. And look, guys, I just bought this dress like two weeks ago. It was on sale. Like, I don't shop crazy like I used to. God delivered me from that shopaholic. <laughs> but when I see a sale, I'm going to try and go for it. This dress was, I think this dress was normally like 80 bucks. And they had it like 60% off. And I just bought it two weeks ago and it's already too big. I have to, look, I got to tuck it into my <laughs> It's already too big. The whole dress. I'm like, I just bought it two weeks ago. And it's a, and it's an extra large. Guys, I haven't been in an extra large in like a decade. <laughs> a decade. Over a decade. Right? And I'm like, wow. And, but I haven't lost any weight in a couple of weeks. I'm still at the same weight. It's like I plateaued. But I think I lost inches from going to the gym, lifting the weights and stuff, and doing treadmill and stuff. I think I lost some inches. So I could probably fit in some larges now. What? <laughs> and I still got some weight to lose. <laughs> I just plateaued. Like, I haven't lost no weight in like almost a month, but I think I lost some inches though. And they say that happens like six months after you lose weight, when you get to that six, seventh month mark, no, wait, I started losing weight in October, November, December, January, March. Yeah, six, seven month mark, you like plateau for like two or three months. You might not lose much weight, but you'll drop inches. And then in that ninth or tenth month, you start losing again. That's what I was told. Mm. <laughs> but as long as I'm losing inches, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. As long as I'm losing inches, I'm good. Hi, Dan. You hi, Penny. Thank you, Penny, for your donation. You're so faithful, Penny. I be praying for you, Penny. I really do. I pray that God be blessing you. A lot of y'all very faithful tithers and sowers, and I just be just blessing God because you know what? People are suffering right now financially, and 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 you know, a lot. Of, some people have been faithful and kept their tithes and sewing, and some people just dropped off. They just stopped tithing and just stopped sewing. You know, I guess because of their money issues. You know, so this 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 whole virus thing, the past two years, it's affecting everybody, even the churches, donation tithes. You know, but I am thankful for the people who are still faithful to God. 
and 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 faithful to sow to this ministry because many have fallen off <laughs> many have stayed but many have fallen off <laughs> you know and i'm like daddy don't they know they're supposed to keep tithing and sewing even when money is low because if you just if you stop tithing and sewing you're just gonna mess your finances up you know you, you can't just fall off like that you got to keep going because that's when god tests you the most god god will test you with your finances trust me i know so when hard times start coming and you fall off the wagon the tide wagon <laughs> and you stop tiding and sewing and doing all the things that you was doing all that them, them financial blessings is gonna go i'm telling you the best time to tithe and sow is when you your finances is acting funny because that's when God's going to test you. See, when you got money, you got a bunch of money, it's easy for you to tithe and sow, sow because you got a bunch of money. It's easy for you to give to people to do this and do that, right? But when your money is funny, that's the test right there. God want to see if you're going to be faithful in the good and the bad, happy and the sad, high and the low, <laughs> right? So when you at your lowest and you can't be faithful at your lowest, then God can't trust you. He can't trust you. You only good when the money's high, <laughs> you know? And like it says in Proverbs, the more you get, the more you receive, the less you don't give, the less you get. So when you are struggling in your finance, I wouldn't care if you only donated a dollar, five dollars, or did. Um, bless your heart. Who is that? Julian, bless you, sweetie, for your seat. I wouldn't care if it's a dollar, five dollars. If that's all you got, you got to keep the momentum every week, every week. And, 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 and even when you be out in the stores that say you only got ten dollars to help to pay towards somebody's groceries or ten dollars to help to wait to somebody in the the department store you see somebody on the street a homeless person and all you guys ten dollars give it you got a tide and you got to have a seat or you could sow your tide and see in this in the same ministries you follow whatever the case is but never stop giving like i noticed with me lately like god will give you assignments like okay let's say you go into church right like a church building and you getting fed there. Okay. You sow your seed there and your tithe. but sometimes he'll put people in your life to sow into too. Like my family. Oh my goodness. <laughs> January, February, March, and April. I'm like, daddy, I haven't been able to tie to too many places. Like I normally do. Cause there's some prophets that I tie to that. I know quite well that they have a ministry abroad and then it's one here. Right. And I'll tie to them faithfully. And then there's a couple of churches that I watch online every blue moon on Facebook. And when God lead me, I sold it in. But every week, I don't let a week go by. Bless your hearts. <laughs> I don't let a week go by without sowing somewhere and I'm um, tithing. So, but January, February, March, April, I've only been able to tie to a few of the places I normally tie because God been having me tied in my, to my family members. And I'm like, I'm like, daddy, I've only been able to tie to a couple of places that I normally tie to. I've been giving it to the family. And he said, that's who I've decided for you to tie to in this season. So that's the first time I learned that. So like you could still be going to church or following a ministry or following a church and you, you still be faithful. So your tides, you see, you know, just your tie. But then on the, on the other side, God may put people in your life. Whether it be family, friends, strangers, because he's been using me to help family and all kinds of strangers for the pet plate. Every time I go outside, he's leading me to somebody to help. I'm like, what is going on here? So then that's when he told me, he was like, in this season, your assignment is your family and who I sent to you. And a few, and, and and I'm still able to still, you know, sow to the, the, the places that I normally do so every month. But he added extra on me this month. My family, it's like, as soon as I get some money in my hand, ring. <laughs> I'm like, are you sensing this in the spirit? <laughs> right? If it's not a family member, I go out, you know, by myself or I'll be with Sister Pat. 
here comes somebody. I'm like, dang, I just got this. <laughs> Can I collect some interest? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> but the Lord blesses me, though, you know. And I know he just be like, like this girl, right? I, just, I, I, just, that's just how I am with God. I be like, Daddy, I didn't even get interest off of this yet. <laughs> I mean, really, it didn't even make it to the bank, <laughs> right? So, so he been like assigning me to multitudes of strangers in my family, and I'm like, what? <laughs> so that's when I learned this year that. He'll still have you so in tight to where you're getting fed at as far as church or ministry. But he'll put some extras on your butt too. And he testing you then too because he, he know you got the little extra and you got plans for that little extra. But he like, nah, the plans you got is not the plans I have. <laughs> and then he reveals his plan. I'm like, but come on, can I even get some interest? Can't just even put it in the bank. Just let it sit there. Let me look at it for a day. <laughs> no, you have to give it away immediately. <laughs> I'm like, what? But then when he turned around and he blesses me, I'm like, all right, daddy, you you use the bomb, daddy. You all right? You all right, papa? <laughs> You know, I'd be like, you the bomb, daddy. You, you bomb diggity. Remember that back in the day? How many of y'all remember we used to say that bomb diggity? You the bomb diggity. Now, I'm telling my age. <laughs> I'm telling my age. Any of y'all that remember that, y'all telling your age. How many of you used to, we used to say bomb diggity, bomb diggity? <laughs> you remember? <laughs> uh, you telling your age, sweet, sweet daughter. You telling your age. Okay, who else remember? God's vessel, you telling it too, Alicia. You telling it. <laughs> Heaven, she's like, LOL. <laughs> canker worm. Yeah, right? Canker worms. You can't let the canker worms eat up your money. <laughs> I can't with you this morning. <laughs> That's so funny. I be saying that sometimes to my kids when they be acting up. I be like, you know what? I can't. I can't. I can't. I'll call you back. <laughs> they be like, but mommy. I'm like, no, nah, give me a second. I'll call you back. I just can't right now. <laughs> and now we dealing with people. I be dealing with people. I'm like, you know what? I can't. I'm like, I'm like pay the bill. I want to kick my shoes off and toss my mic. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let me kick my shoes off, toss my mic like Patty. <laughs> Good morning, Sister Benny had a dream of a black Bitcoin called Black Mamba. What? <laughs> I just brought it yesterday. What is a Black Mamba? I gotta look that up. Where is where you get it from? Is it on Coinbase? And how much is it? Is it on Coinbase? Um, or is it on crypto.com? Where is that? Because I ain't opening up no more um or these platforms. I don't know. No. <laughs> So where is that? Black, where is that? Crypto.com or Coinbase? Y'all hear that? She said Benny had a dream about Black Mama. Oh, and and, uh, <laughs> and listen, I'm going to tell y'all about um, another coin. What is it called? I heard it from another prophet. He saw it in a dream. He saw the ape coin and this other coin, and he was right about the ape coin. Man, that thing shot up like ten dollars. But see, I ain't messing with that ape coin because Daddy told me, <laughs> Daddy told me to watch them NFTs because you know those M NFTs that got the the monsters and the apes on them. Daddy said, be careful with them N NFTs because some of them got demons in them. Be careful if you buying them d NFTs. Be careful with the ones that look like monsters and monkeys. And apes, because they got demons in them, and you buy them, them demons will come and come in you through the phone. So the ape coin, I was gonna get it, but I had a bad feeling about. It. I said, "Daddy, this look demonic," and he told me it is. <laughs> it is, and I, and look, I I I had actually bought a couple of hundred dollars of it. And then I kept, I didn't feel right about it. I was like, Daddy, I'm going to get my money back. He said, please do. Right? And now the coin went up, but I only had a couple of hundred. So I probably would have made like, what, maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred off of it by now if I would have kept it. So it's not like I lost a lot and I got my money back. But 
That eight corn, he told me something was wrong with that eight corn, so I didn't mess with it. But that other corn, this guy, he's a prophet. He on here too. Um, what did he call it? De 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 Delirious. Darn. Uh, I brought a little bit of it. It was a dollar sixty one cents. So I brought a little bit of it, and it actually went up today. Like three, I looked at my thing, and it was like three hundred dollars over. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna leave that right there because that coin gonna go back up to five or six dollars. So when it go back up to five or six dollars, then I'll take it, take take my money and run. And I was like, he was right about that, Delirious. I hope I'm saying it right. Del 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 Delaris Mines. Am I saying it right, guys? Delaris Mines. It's it's on Coinbase app. Um, am I saying it right? Delaris Mines. He said that that coin was going to go. First, he said ApeCoin was going to go first. And then he said that coin's going to go. So ApeCoin went through the roof. So he was right about that. And then he said the Delaris coin, coin was going to go up. And it did. It, for me, it went up $300 because I didn't have that much of it because it was a dollar and some change. So, you know, a sister couldn't buy a whole bunch. So I said, let me get a little. At least I get a little piece of the skin, you know. So I looked at the thing that's one and three, but now it's going down a little. So I was like, I'm going to wait because it, it, it's all time high was almost $5. So I said, I'm going to wait till it hit the $5 and then I can make a little something, pay a bill with that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, I think it's called Delaris Mines. So he was right about the eight coin. So I'm sure he's going to be right about Delaris Mines. And then it was this other guy. He not a prophet, but um, I was I will have. Oh yeah, okay. I was answering. No, some people was commenting on the uh, the 18 shorts that I made yesterday. And um, because I be watching three different crypto guys, I watch Keenan. Sometime Johnny Currency 365. I watch Twisted Christian, who is the TC Wealth Wealth with TC, and then that other guy. He be like boom shakalaka. Y'all know who I'm talking about? The white man. He always be talking about Bitcoin and other coins, and he be on point, and he'll always say boom shakalaka laka. <laughs> I used to watch Larry, but I don't watch Larry that much anymore. But um, he's a white man. He got short blonde hair. Y'all know who I'm talking about. He be like, boom, shaka, laka, laka. <laughs> on, on Bitcoin. And he be on point. He said Bitcoin was going to go down like it is. He even said five, six months ago, he said, guys, be prepared because we about to go in the in a crypto winter and it's about to be the worst crypto winter in history and he said it's going to be like going to the candy store and he was like save up your money so you could go shopping <laughs> and he said this whole first quarter was going to be a downturn and then he said the second quarter which we're about to go into when may hit is going to go through the roof and then he said it was going to go down again and i was like daddy that's exactly what you told me so um I be watching them. So one of them he he talked about this coin called Bone Bone Bone. It's it's Dodge Killer. I never really heard of it before, but they call it Bone B O N E. <clears throat> and he was talking about that car, right? No, leash. He was talking about leash, but you can't even get that on Coinbase app. You can't even get it. And it was eight. eight you you saw it on Coinbase. It was eight hundred eighty eight dollars. I was like, oh, that's a little steep for me. <laughs> I said, I said, I'll go to the other one. So <clears throat> he mentioned another one called Bone. And I looked it up and it's not on Coinbase, but it's on Coinbase app. And it and I and I brought like a little bit of that because it was kind of like a little high, but then I looked at the all-time high and I was like, oh snap, give me a little bit of this if I have. <laughs> if this could pay a couple of bills if it go back to that, right? So I had never heard of Dodge Killer Leash, but it was $888,000. That was just, that was too much. That was over my head right now. Maybe in the future. <laughs> right now, no. So I was like, Daddy, should I get the other coin? And he told me, go ahead, get the other coin. <clears throat> so I went to Coinbase and got it. And it's spelled B-O-N-E. He he had like 10 videos. I just happened to find this guy. So I started following him. So he's like the fifth one because he had other videos about XRP. He said XRP was going to go to 70 something cent when it was like down to 20 something cent and it did it. And then he said these other coins that's up high now 
Um, I was like, Dad, I wish I would have spout him before. I would have got the other coins, but they too high now, so I ain't messing with them, right? But the bone coin wasn't as high. I think it was 50, yeah, I think it's 57 cents. <clears throat> so you can take a couple hundred dollars and get you the bone coin. And if you wait till it gets to the all-time high, you could get like a couple of grand out of it, a couple of thousand. You could pay some bills, pay a car note. You know, you could you could pay a couple of bills with a couple of thousand, right? He so he was very accurate, and I was like, wow. So then he said, bone coin. He was like, get you some bone coin. And he said, the Dodge Killer, but the Dodge Killer is very expensive right now. But the Dodge Killer is $888. But six months ago, it was $7,000 and some change. So whoever can, can afford to buy that kind of coin, you going to have some money. <laughs> but sister right here, I got the bone coin. <laughs> 57 cent coin. I'm good. I don't got to get rich. Just give me enough to pay some bills. I'm good. Right? <laughs> so go and get y'all some bone coin if y'all got on um, Coinbase app. And it could be on Binance. It could be on Gemini. It could be on Crypto.com. I don't know. But he said that that bone coin was going to go through the roof and the all-time high was good. And he said that it was going to surpass the all-time high. Now, I'm not a guru nor giving you financial information or nothing like that. But I'm just telling you what he said. And he was, I looked at about eight of his videos and he was very accurate, very accurate. <clears throat> so I prayed and God told me to, I could get some of the bone coins. So go look for it. It's spelled B-O-N-E and it's red. And it looked like a little bone and um, it's red. All red. Like this pretty orangey red. You you Because it got two bones on the app. But the one that he said, because he showed the picture, it's red and it got a cute little bone on it. Right? And I looked at the all-time high and it was pretty good. I think it was $5 and some change. But he kept saying it was going to go higher. So go get you some. I'm farming bone. Oh, you got bone. Okay. Good morning, Andrea. Leash and Dodge Killer. Oh, so Leash is part. Yeah, that coin is expensive. It's $888. But six months ago, guys, it was $7,000. What? <laughs> so if you could go ahead and get you some of them, you're going to be good. Don't forget me. I'm telling all of y'all, when y'all strike it rich on these coins, enrich me. Because <laughs> me and daddy was talking the other day, and daddy was like, if it was not for me telling you about these coins, Rosalind, none of them would have them. I said, yeah. So I said, let me remind them. So when y'all strike it rich, and y'all get y'all little money on y'all coins, all the coins. I gave y'all about 30 coins already. Don't forget me. Don't forget apostle. Come and enrich me. Come and enrich my pockets because <laughs> you'll be blessed even more. And so when the bone coin goes up, don't forget me. And those of you who buy the, uh, the leash killer and y'all get that seven grand, don't forget me. Don't forget me. Come and enrich me a little because <laughs> you'll be blessed even more. <laughs> Have you heard of Allen Project? Nah, I never heard of that. What's that? AMT TV? Christopher Green? Mm -mm. What's that? Um, Allen Project. You're not going to forget me, good James. That is very true. I wouldn't know about any coins if it weren't for this ministry. Yeah, because these, look, a lot of these gurus don't always tell you the, the coins to get. They'll tell you to get the coins that they're invested in. If you notice that, if you listen to a lot of these gurus, they will tell you to get the coins they're invested in. But they don't tell you about the other coins that they probably invested it in. <laughs> You know, you might see their little wallets and you see what coins they got, but you don't see all the other coins. I'm the only one on here leading people to different coins because God is showing me in my visions. And then he leading me to these gurus <laughs> and I'm listening to them and they come in the past, especially that one that said it about the eight coin. And then he said about Delal De De Deliria, Delala Mines is 57 cent. And you don't got to get a whole bunch. Take a cup, two, three hundred dollars and get you something. Be happy to get, get some bills paid. Every coin ain't going to make you rich. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and this is how people get rich. They 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 don't have that mon mentality. Okay, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go all in and be rich overnight. Nah, 
They got the mentality, you know what? I'm going to buy this right here. I'm going to invest in this right here because this going to pay some bills. And then I'm going to invest in this one right here because this one might be a down payment on a car. And then I'm going to invest in this one right here because this one might be a down payment on a house. See, that's how you get rich. You should split, spread your money. <laughs> And your investments. Don't just invest in one thing. Like, don't just invest in Sheba. Because, like, okay, oh, yeah. Like, that prophet uh, about the ape coin and the Delatomine coins, he said that God said that Sheba was going to happen this year, but not right now. And that's true. Because I remember Brother Daniel told me we was going to see it go up a little bit in May, and people was going to make some money, and then it was going to tank again and go back up in August ex expeditiously. Like, higher than we could ever expect. So I was like, a lot of his words line up with um, Brother Dan. I think his name is Prophet for Prophet. I found him through TC, the wealth transfer guy. <clears throat> he even had, he, one of his videos, he just made, he had me in it. Um, Y'all remember that prophecy I gave y'all in June 2021 about um, Sheba and Cardano? And he was like, see, if y'all would have seen... <clears throat> Apostle Solomon's video in June, a lot of y'all would be rich right now. And I was like, you know what? I should have been rich too because God gave me the word. <laughs> I was too scared to put a whole bunch of money in the Sheba. So I put something in and I made a nice little profit. But I was like, daddy, I regret it. I should have put more money in there. I could have got a million bucks. It has shot up so high. I could have got a million bucks if I would have put in what, what, what I felt in my spirit. But I, I was too scared to do that. <laughs> I was scared, you know, it's frightening. <laughs> you know, I was too scared. So I just put a little in there. And so I got a little reward. But you know, it was a good reward, but I got a little reward. I was like, Daddy, I should have I should have put way more money in there. I should have did that. And even my brother in the Lord, I was telling them about it, and they was like, Man, I should have put more in there too. But then some of them got some of them had put a lot and got money. And like brother Johnny. Um, my brother Steve, a couple of other ones, they got made some good money, you know, um, and, and a few of them, you know, gave me some, but some of them didn't give me anything. <laughs> and one of them gave me a hundred bucks and I'm like, really a hundred bucks to myself. I'm, I'm appreciative, but look, look, you would not have had that if I didn't say that word in June. You give me a hundred? Really? <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I know now. I know who I'm working with. I know who I'm dealing with. <laughs> you know, you know, you don't find out who you're dealing with until the money start getting involved. <laughs> when money start getting involved, guys, that's when you find out who you really dealing with. That's how you find it if they really fool you or not. <laughs> when they get some money and they start acting funny. <laughs> And they forget you? Uh-huh. Okay. But guess what? God watching. And God gonna handle it. <laughs> Island Projects coin. It's kind of like a timeshare. Oh. Uh, just, you know, it's just some stuff I ain't getting involved in. People be sending me names of coins in my Facebook. I'm like, <laughs> I can't, I can't do it. I can't buy every coin. People like Apostle, what you think about this coin? Apostle, what you think about? I'm like, look, I don't know about the coin. The Lord ain't told me nothing about it, so I can't tell you nothing. And and and, and Apostle, you should invest in it. I'm like, nah, uh-uh. <laughs> I, you, you invest in it. If you have money long like that, you go right ahead. <laughs> okay? <laughs> go right ahead. Because every coin is not for you to invest in. <laughs> people get funny when they get the money i'm so glad i don't want yeah I, let me tell you i've seen quite a few people change on me they uh, i gave you know i even helped them when they had nothing nothing food car nothing <laughs> right and then they get money oh they change they get known they change i'm like wow daddy they wasn't like that before Five years ago, no one like that. And, and daddy be like, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. I'm going to handle it. And I'll leave it to, and I've seen him here. I've seen people come back to me, email me, call me. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry how I did you. You know, because ever since I did that to you, things ain't been right for me financially. Stuff been breaking down, and I'm listening to it. I'm like, mm-hmm, to myself. Yeah, uh -huh, daddy told me he ain't going to deal with you. 
<laughs> As I'm going to tell you something, it's a valuable lesson. When somebody helps you and you down and out, you hungry, you ain't got no food, you ain't got no car, they buy you a bicycle, <laughs> you know, they, they, they tell you about investments, or they even give you money to help you invest, or whatever they help you with. And then you get, you get up there, don't forget them, because guess what? The bridge that you cross getting up there is the same bridge you're going to cross when you go down. Because trust me, you ain't even got to be a child of God. It's the law of average. It's what you put out in the earth. It's going to come back to you. And in the Bible, it says it too. When you do somebody dirty, dirt going to hit you. Somebody that helped you, fed you, did this, did that, invested in things for you, gave you money to do it or taught you to do it. You get your money and you act a fool. And you think God ain't going to reproach you for that? Trust me. You better listen to me because I done seen him do it to people who done did that to me. And I'm sure some of y'all done seen it too. And you ain't even got to be a Christian. It's the law of average. What you put out in the atmosphere is going to hit your butt. So if somebody's helping you and you turn your back on them and you don't want to give them nothing or you give them very little, trust me, what you putting back out in the atmosphere is going to hit you back. So if you're going to do them dirty, dirt coming to you. So don't ever forget the people who help you. Don't forget them, you know, and keep your promises. Oh, I'm going to hook you up. I, you know how many times I hear that? I'm going to hook you up, Apostle. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, all right, I'm taking like a grain of salt. <laughs> Months go by. And I'm like, you know, where's the hookup? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you know what, Daddy? I'm going to let you take care of it. I ain't going to put my mouth on them. I'm going to let you take care of it. Because I already know. Because I done seen them. And you ain't even got to be a Christian. You don't. Don't do nobody dirty. If, you, if they help you and you get good, you better repay. You better bless them. Because that's the only way you're going to keep your blessing. Because you don't, God don't let the devil take it from you. It's the law of average. That's what it's called. The law of average. What you put out in the atmosphere, what you put out in the earth is going to come back to you. And when you make promises to people, heaven witnesses those promises. Everybody in the heavens, even the devil, witnesses those promises. And saying way for you not to keep them. And God looking for you to keep them. <laughs> so take heed. Don't forget the people who help you. Don't start acting funny. You know, I remember there's some people who used to always email me for prophecies and stuff. You know, and ask me, is this right, that right, right? And, and, and I would used to help them. I ain't asked for nothing, right? And they get their money. Oh, prophet so-and-so said this. I'm like, where was prophet so-and-so when you was emailing me? Asking me about my prophecies and then going out there lying saying that God gave it to you and I was the one that gave it to you and I could have put your butt on front street and called you false, but I ain't do that, did I? Because I got integrity. See, I ain't going to go after your butt when I know you taking my words. I ain't going to go after you. I'm going to let the Lord handle you and it ain't my word anyway. It's God. So I'm going to let God do what he want to do. You know what I'm saying? But all of a sudden, oh, prophet so-and-so said, who was prophet so-and-so? And then prophet so-and-so can't even get their prophecies right. Oh, well, now you lifting up prophet so-and-so. But prophet so-and-so wasn't there years ago. I was. Did prophet so-and-so give you money to feed your butt? Buy toilet paper to wipe your behind? No. Nope. I was. Right? But now, you don't diss me. You ain't got nothing for me. Right? That's how people is. That's how people is, you know, and, and it used to hurt me, man. But you know what I'm saying? It don't no more because you become, you, you start to expect people to do that. <laughs> you start to expect them to do you wrong. You start to expect them to do you dirty. You expect them to, to diss you. <laughs> you learn your lesson. You start to expect it. And then when they do, when then when they don't diss you and they do do you right, you be like, Shot. <laughs> or you be like, bless God, they did me right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can't tell you, people have helped me in the past and I never forget them. I never forget them. Never. Like, I was telling Pat like two weeks ago, I said, Pat, you got you got dividends with me for life. <laughs> you know, although I've helped her a lot, she has helped me. And I'm like, sis, you got dividends for life. I was like, I can't even get mad at you. And even if I get mad at you, you still got dividends for life. <laughs> you got dividends for life. <laughs> and then, like some people, 
who been given to me, given to the ministry over the years. I was like, yo, y'all got dividends. When a, when a sister hit, when a sister get rich, I ain't gonna forget you. <laughs> Even some of y'all been faithful for years. And I'll be like, daddy, when you hook me up, I'm gonna hook them up. Some of them, some of y'all already told y'all when, when daddy hooked me up, I'm gonna hook y'all up for real. I'm gonna be writing checks. <laughs> Cause some of y'all been faithful for years. I mean years. And then some of y'all don't have a lot of money and you still faithful. So it's like, I got some names in my heart and I already got approval with God. When, when he ever, whenever he get me there and y'all need some help, sis going to be there. I mean, I'm already there already for people. I've already given out so much money and raised money for people. I'm just saying when big money come, <laughs> I'll be writing checks <laughs> to certain followers. <laughs> You know, that's been there a long time, you know, long, long time. I remember when I was like, was it like seven, eight years ago when I was living in Montclair and I had to move and, and, and God told me to come on the Periscope and YouTube and ask for help. And I wouldn't do it. I had pride. So then he sent this prophet and this prophet said, yeah, I forget what she said, but it 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 got me to come on, and 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 I came on, and I was telling y'all on Periscope and YouTube, I was like, I really don't want to do this, but God asked, told me to do this, and I, I needed, I think I needed like twelve hundred bucks, cause I had like twelve, but I needed another twelve, cause it's too much security, and everybody helped me like within hours i had i think like twenty five hundred dollars within hours and i was shocked right and i got my new place and i came on and i let people see my little living room you know where i was broadcasting from and i was able to move and and a lot of y'all still follow me and i don't and i don't forget those people I don't forget some are not following me anymore, but some still are. And I don't forget those people. I don't forget like I like I could I could name some like Sister Sophie, um, what's it, Shelly and Travis, a uh, Rose, Bessie Pat, um, Brother Allen was there. You know, I can remember a lot of y'all from back back at that time. I can remember, you know, so some of y'all is in my heart and y'all gonna stay there because some of y'all you know, have been very, very faithful. And I remember some of y'all that helped me back then, you know, and I ain't want to do it, but God forced me to do it. And I was shocked that y'all had gave me so much money within hours. <laughs> you know, it's like seven, eight years ago when I was in Montclair. <laughs> oh, I love, I love y'all too. <laughs> I love you guys too. <laughs> I was so scared for this person threatening. You were scared? <laughs> Look, I don't be scared for them no more. You know what? Because I got to the point, I'm like, you know what? They grown, they adults, they got their own mind, own conscience, and they know what they're doing. I know y'all selling across, they know not what they're doing, but in this day, when they curse you, they know what they're doing because you come, I come on constantly tell people you can't be cursing people for no reason. You know what I'm saying? So they know what they're doing. So I don't feel sorry for them no more. I used to, but no more. I'd be like, Lord, you know what? They just curse themselves. And, and I can't feel sorry for them because they already know what they're doing. They don't care. They don't fear God. Or they think ain't nothing going to happen to them. They think God ain't going to do nothing to them. It's either they think God ain't going to do nothing to them or they don't fear God or they don't care. But they know what they're doing. When anytime when they come on my sh my channels and leave comments cursing me, come on, you know what you're doing. You know what you're. So I'll be like that. I don't feel sorry for them. I said the only thing I pray for them is that they repent, confess, get right, and get salvation, so they can be saved and share in your love and in your joy and do their destiny. That's what I got for them, and that's it. <laughs> and Daddy, all right with that. <laughs> Good morning, Jesse. And and God is okay with that. You know what I'm saying? All right, let me tell y'all about Will Smith. Um, I was um at my altar praying and stuff, right? And 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 Daddy, y'all know he does this sometimes. He just was like, um, they're gonna. He said, he said they're gonna reinstate Will Smith. And I was like, what do you mean reinstate Will Smith? <laughs> and Daddy said. What he did, you know, the slap and all, it's, it ain't going to go nowhere, but it's going to solidify and it's going to be kind of swept under a little. And that public, publicly, you're going to see Will Smith and Chris Rock 
make up publicly. Like now God never told me if this was a setup or if this was a real deal, but he did tell me publicly, we're going to see him, Will Smith and Chris Rock. Cause they was always good friends anyway. Um, Will Smith and Chris Rock, they don't already made up. God said that, but you're going to see it publicly. Like so, they're going to do something and they're going to come on TV and they're going to apologize to each other. And then the Lord showed me, um, Will Smith was sitting down. I don't know if it was Gail King or somebody else, but it was somebody who was like high up, like Oprah used to be, or like Barbara Walters used to be. Um, he was sitting down with having this great big interview. So this, this great big interview that's going to come and his public, uh, apology and making up with Chris Rock is going to like sweep it under the rug, but it's going to always be there, but it's going to sweep it under the rug and his career is going to take off again because God told me that Will Smith is a hit runner. That's what he called him a hit runner. Um, he's only had one or two movies that flopped. Most of his movies have made hundreds of millions. He's made billions for himself and others, right? So they're looking at him like, okay, he's a moneymaker. And they really don't want to like destroy him. Like Kanye West, remember when, because God compared it to Kanye West. Remember when Kanye West was acting a fool and he went in the mental institution and, and they thought his career was done and they was trying to squash him, but he made too much money. He commanded too much money. He brought in too much money. So they found a way to forgive him, <laughs> sweep it under the rug. You know what I'm saying? And Kim took him back and all of that, right? That's like with Will Smith. He's, he's a hit runner, right? So they know you know, if they do what they want to do to him, I mean, they already took him out the academy for 10 years, but even God said that was going to backtrack. They was going to backtrack. They was going to lessen the time with that. Watch, you're going to hit the Academy Award. They're going to come out and say they're going to lessen his time because it's 10 years, but they're going to lessen it. You're going to see him in his interview on TV and you're going to see him and Chris Rock probably unite together because because daddy said they that they say that Will Smith is a hit runner. He's a money maker and he still got a lot of money in him, right? <laughs> so they're going to find a way to put it under the rug. <clears throat> but it's always going to be there. And that's what that's what he told me this morning. Hey, how you doing, Sophie? That's what he that's what that's what he told me this morning about Will Smith. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then um, in one of my shorts, um, I, I forget which one it was. It was about. I think the one where daddy was talking about doing a new thing, something like that. But in one of them in the title, it has the word reset. And um, the Lord kept showing me there's going to be a reset in our our con economy. And if you read, I think it's the book. What's that book? He told me the book. I should have wrote it down. Um, is it the book? Is it is it a book called the Book of Jubilee or is it the Book of Jasper? I forget. Is it? The, tell me, guys. Is it a book called the Book of Jubilee? He just kept giving me the word Jubilee. <clears throat> okay, like in the Bible, it says every seven years you're supposed to forgive debt. You know they don't do that. <laughs> do that decades go by before our government forgives anything right but in our lifetime there has been de debts wiped out and reset but it's been decades but God said that they're going to reset a lot of debt this year and next year like okay there yeah, I'm read I'm reading a lot about student loans right so he already erased some student loans for people who are disabled. Nonprofits. I just got to figure out the application to fill out for nonprofits. Um, so if you had 120 consecutive payments, they'll wipe it out. If you didn't, they wipe it out three, four years of payments. And then he just paused it again. It was paused to August and then he just paused it past that. Now they are waiting on him to completely erase all student loan debt. And I believe he's going to do that because the Lord said that they're going to reset our economy. They're going to be wiping out debt. And I was like, daddy, why are they going to do that? I said, because that's helping people. <laughs> and then God was like, they don't have a choice. 
They don't have a choice. See, see what you need to understand is this. Although the devil think he in control right now, right? <laughs> and he making things hard for us. He trying to collapse our nation, you know, because if he does collapse this nation, other nations will go with it because we feed other places, right? Um, He ain't in control. That's what he need to understand. Like, he think he could just do what he want to do, right? Like, bulldoze us, right? And like, God ain't going to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because as long as God got peeps here on the earth praying... God can do stuff, right? So it's like it's like they put in a position with our debt where they don't have no choice but to reset some debt. Now, what debt they gonna reset? I don't know. Could it be that trillion? What it what is what is it? We 400 trillion in debt or 200 trillion in debt? I mean, could it be that too? Yeah, I mean it could be because all it takes is a pen and a stroke or, or like him signing it, executive order, and then whoever controls it goes into the computer. Whoops, gone. <laughs> Back to zero. So um it could be that. I don't know, but I do know they're going to be resetting debt, like wiping it off. Because they don't have no choice. The devil don't have no choice but to let it happen. Because they want their plans to to to, to happen, but Certain plans can't happen unless they do that. You know, so there has been debt forgiveness on this earth before. And it's time again, because it's been. A, and then and then in order for them to introduce their new digital platform, which I told y'all six years ago was coming. They have to, like, get rid of a lot of debt, a lot, a lot of debt, you know, and then the dollar has to literally come down, you know, because the dollar's at an all-time high right now. But the dollar, I seen the dollar going all the way down to 50, 60 percent, but it didn't stay there a long time. It's in my book on um Amazon, but it didn't stay there a long time. But it stayed there for a minute, but it didn't stay there for a long time. And when it did that, inflation went really, really high. So I don't know. It could be the dollar could drop 50 to 60 percent between here and next year because they keep saying. By the end of this year and next year, inflation is going to hit us, but it's already hitting us now. You know what I'm saying? It's already hitting us now. You know, so um, like I, I, I donated some money to a person in, where are they at? Australia. And I wanted to give the person a hundred bucks. I had to pay $145 just to give them the 110. I'm like, dang, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's how spend $140 just to donate 110 to her because she was over, it was in Australia or UK, one of them. So that means, you know, the, in her country is high, you know? So, um, I wouldn't be surprised if the dollar dropped 50 to 60% and in this year or next year, I'm not saying it's going to because I saw it six years ago, but they saying the inflation, inflation is going to be really, really bad the end of this year and next year. So usually when you have high inflation, the dollar drops. The dollar is very high right now, although we're in a slight recession. But in, but if you go in inflation, that means the dollar is going to drop. So the dollar might drop to 50, 60 percent by the end of this year or next year. I'm not saying it <clears throat> but i'm just saying from the prophecy i had said five six years ago so we will see right so usually when you have like high inflation like that and you want to try and bring in a new financial structure you have to erase the debts right and then i, I saw some banks closing and that's in that book too but i recently saw banks closing in the spirit room i saw banks just just, just closing people going to their like okay we're gonna use bank of america okay like i told y'all last year that some banks was gonna close right now somebody emailed me i forgot who it was in my facebook and they said they went to bank of america in california and it was closed they've been closed for a week and then wells fargo too so it's not like like Bank of America, well, Wells Fargo is going to be taken over very soon. That's in my book online too. I think Wells Fargo got about another two years, a year or two before somebody else takes them over, right? Um, but let's say Bank of America, you go to your corner Bank of America and that's close. It doesn't mean all the Bank of Americas are going to close. You're just going to see some banking structures close, but it don't mean the whole Caboodle is going to close. Just some of them. Like you might see some Bank of America's close. You might see some Wells Fargo's close. As far as Chase is concerned, I saw Chase standing. I saw um, another bank. Um, what was the name of the bank? I saw Chase. 
I saw Bank of America still standing. It was Chase Bank of America, and it was like two other banks. Um, and I saw a lot of credit unions standing. But Wells Fargo was was taken over. They merged with another bank, and I saw five years, and we got two years left, right? And um, but you're going to see some individual banks close. Like you might see a Bank of America over here close. A uh, uh, Maybe you could see a Chase Bank over there closed, but I saw Chase standing, right? So you might see that Mellencamp Bank or uh, Saks, what's that other one? It's Mellencamp. Um, they're more so investment firms, but they got banks. Um, oh, Capital One, I saw them being strong because they had a, they, because they got credit cards and auto loans and they got mortgages. So I saw Capital One standing strong too. Um, but Wells Fargo is going to merge. They're going to merge. Um, and PNC Bank, I saw them merging too. They still here too, but it's not a lot of them. And I saw them merging too. So we, you, so you're going to see some changes in banking structures. You're definitely going to see some change. And you're going to see changes in credit cards because I saw that too. Um, like it's going to be harder for people to get credit cards now. It's going to be harder for people to get credit cards. It's going to be harder for people to get loans. You're going to have to have a 700 credit or better because most places you only need 620. Even to get a mortgage for a house, your credit it, it only needs to be 620 or better. But they're going to be raising the scores like 700 or better. And most people, average people don't have 700. They got like 620, 640, something like that. But um, they're going to be measuring people off of 700 credit or better. So it's going to be harder for people to get loans car loans even car loans you could get a car loan with 600 credit score but they gonna raise it raise it up too because of the way the world is going financially wells fargo is in the news for discrimination again they was in the news a couple of years ago for something they did who they discriminating against is it black people white people spanish people who yes they do that with a lot of capital one yeah hi yama Another celebrity couple, Johnny Depp and his ex-wife, public court case now is happening where there's exposure of abuse, manipulation from women. It seems like relationships are being exposed. Yeah. Yeah. So what they in court for, though? If she is ex-wife, why they in court? So what's happening? Why they, why they got to go to court? Wow. 145. <laughs> yes, that's what. Yeah, I, I want you know I wanted to donate it to her because she's a sweet little girl and I know and she's young and I and I knew she needed help you know and and I and I keep in contact with her over the past year so I helped her you know and and she and, and she really appreciated. See when you when you help people when they down and out and you don't even know them that well I've only known her for a year and um. You don't even know them that well, and um, God tells you in the spirit to help them, and he shows you they're in need, and you help them, and they're like, wow, you don't even know me that well, you know, and you help him. And she said this, what's the word she said to me? She said, I appreciate it, and it changes my outlook, or something she said, right? So you, so, you know, you never know when you help people you don't know that well, or you know them through internet and stuff like that, or you meet them on the street and you don't even know them, you know, and you help them. You don't know how you change in their life. They could be ready to commit suicide. And I've met people like that. I've, I've even one of my brothers in the Lord, God, I'm sitting in my couch in 2019, September. And he was like, call your brother. He wants to kill himself. I'm like, what? I called him. Right. And I said to him, are you, are you thinking about committing suicide? And he said, yes. I was like, no, what's wrong with you? And he's so high in the spirit. And at that time, he, he, he was very high in the spirit. And I couldn't understand why he wanted to kill himself, you know? And God got him out of such, he had such massive trouble he was in. And because he followed the leading of God through me, he got out of it when he shouldn't have, right? So I'm talking to him. I'm like, why would you want to kill yourself after all God took you out of and the destiny he has for you? So I literally talked to him out of suicide. And I used to do that anyway. I used to work for Magellan. And we used to talk people out of suicide constantly. So I'm good at that, right? And then I got like three years in psychology, you know? Uh, so I'm pretty good at that. So I literally, God used me to talk about suicide. 
And his whole life changed. And I've talked to a few other people out of suicide, believe it or not. And his whole life changed. So you never know what somebody going through. And your little, your little, you think you you think you just doing a little bit when when you doing a lot. And in the spirit realm, them angels that's watching over you and reporting to God, they writing this down. She just do. <laughs> and then when they go to report to God later on in the evenings, like midnight hour, that's why the enemy is so busy. You know, they're reporting to God. They're like, God, she gave so-and-so $13. She gave so-and-so $10. She gave so You think $13, $10 is a, is a little. Mm -hmm. Not to God. I mean, you know, God will take that $10 you gave somebody and multiply that to millions if he choose to, or thousands, or hundreds of thousands, or hundreds of dollars if he choose to. So no matter you get somebody a dollar, 50 cent a quarter, it may be little to you, but it's big to God. Trust me, it's big to God. He's suing, oh, he's suing his ex-wife for defamation? Uh-oh. Oh, what did she say about him? <laughs> I miss Mary. Virginia Law. Johnny Depp messed up in wrong state. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a what? Republican state too, Virginia? I lived in Virginia. I ain't like it. I ain't like I used to live in Lynchburg because I was going to Liberty University in Lynchburg. Oh, I, 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 it was a little racist down there. Even Liberty itself, they were a little racist because they didn't believe in women preachers. But yet you you take our money, our grant money and our loan money and let us go to school, get degrees. But you don't believe in us preaching. Maybe they changed by now. This was in 20 from 2012 to 2014, I believe. Right. So maybe they changed now. Good morning. You know, so. um. And still pray for Will Smith because he was over in India <laughs> going for meditation and yogurt, the clean the yogurt to clean himself. I'm like, no, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> so still pray for him. He go to God. <laughs> I've heard prophets say that we need to move our money out of national banks and go to local banks. Well, let me tell you something. A bank is a bank. Now, credit unions, when I go home, I'm going to get me a credit union account. I was going to do it down here, but I'm like, this credit union ain't back up there. So I'm going to wait till I go home. And I'm going to have a credit union account, too. Um, but banks are banks, whether they're local or whether they're national. Banks are banks. Your local banks will close down quicker than the national banks because the national banks can take them over and merge them right on out. So to me, banks is a bank. So you just pray and ask God what bank you should go to. What what bank is going to um, have your money safe? You know what I'm saying? Um, and then they have these other, somebody sent me something where you could get these bank accounts um, and they legal too, but you got to have a business. Um, I forgot the name of it. Um, they're not in this country. They're in other countries and they're very safe accounts, but you have to have a business account. Because, I mean, you have to have a business because the account has to be in your business. I'm um, tired. I forgot what it was. I forget. They they in other countries, but they're very safe to have. But you got to have a business. You just can't get it. You got to have like an LLC or in-court business or something like that. Or S, S business or C-Corp, something like that. Um, I forget it. Somebody sent it to me. I forget it. Oh, and somebody wanted to know what a VPN number is. Okay. A VPN number is what happens. Is it's a it's a security thing. It keeps it keeps hackers out of your phone. You could also use it on your computer, but I have a good security on my computer already. But it keeps it it doesn't stop the government from tracking your butt <laughs> or finding you, right? But it stops hackers. It changes your IP. Like you could live in Georgia. And they could give you an IP in Timbuktu. <laughs> you could choose it. If you want an IP over in, in um, France, you could have it, right? So, or if you want an IP where you live, if you, you're in Georgia and you want your IP in here in Georgia, you'll have it here. But the hackers will not be able to trace you or hack you. But it doesn't stop the FBI and or the feds. And it's like um, I paid 50 percent off for the whole year because they had offered 50 percent off. And um, when you download it with the key, you have this little thing. It's like a P, but it's cute at the top of your phone letting you know. So like even when you out and you you pick up somebody's Wi-Fi, they can't trace you. 
Like they can't, like, let's say you use somebody's Wi-Fi to look in your bank account or your PayPal. They'll never be able to hack it. But if you didn't have the VIN VPN and you use somebody's Wi-Fi, you could possibly, your bank account could be hacked. Your bank account could be hacked. But that's not going to stop you from getting te texts that's going to try and hack you through a text or through an email. But what it stops is some people can just hack your phone, period. They don't even got to do nothing to trick you. They can just hack it and wipe you out. But with the VPN, they can't do that. And if you put it on your computer, it, it, it stops the computer from being hacked too. But I got a good security on mine and it stops a lot of stuff. So, And I don't just pay for that sucker for a year. So when that run out, then um, I'm going to use my key for the VPN and put it on the computer. It worked. Trust me. Somebody told me about it on here on the YouTube. And then somebody asked me about it. Virginia still the same way, James? I've had credit. Yeah, credit unions are good. Hi, Kendra. I know someone who went to the bank to get a large amount of money out, and the bank was panicking. <laughs> what? And taking her was everything okay? They could not give her the money right away. What? They supposed to have money? What, Dad? How much was she trying to take? Like 50 grand? <laughs> Like at least a million dollars on hand. I used to work for banks. I used to work for PNC. I used to work for Wacker Hut. And before it was Wacker Hut, I forget what it was. And I used to work for this other bank called Pilgrim Pilgrim Grant Bank. And I used to work for another bank. Because Wacker Hut became Wells Fargo. I worked for like four or five banks within a five-year period. So they're supposed to keep at least a million dollars in the bank at all times. They're supposed to. Now they might have changed. They might only keep five hundred grand in there now, but they're supposed to have at least a million dollars, at least a million. But maybe they change. I don't know. Maybe they don't keep as much anymore. You know, like a Wells Fargo got got robbed not too far from me. I'm like, what? <laughs> in the next town over, I'm like, what? Wells Fargo? You don't never hear Wells Fargo getting robbed. Who's the next town over? I was like, what? <laughs> Johnny Depp is a witch, I heard. Oh, wow. Johnny Depp lost movie deals. Cause, oh, he lost movie deals. Oh, so he probably suing her for millions, huh? Nah, maybe hundreds of millions, right? If he lost movie deals because of her, do she have that kind of money? Do she got hundreds of millions? Because I'm sure that's what he's suing her for because he's another hit runner. He used to bring... Box office smashes, man. It, 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 hundreds of millions would come out of his movies. So I'm sure he probably suing her for a lot. I think my husband brought up the VP. Oh, it was your husband. Okay, Jadica. Bless his heart for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. Now other people could get it too. See, one thing a person could say could bless many. So God will bless him and Yeshua's name. I believe these banks are running out of money. They could be. Some are saying the banks will be cyber attacks, smash. What? Let me tell you, it could be. You never know. Banks have already had cyber attacks. How, you know how many cyber attacks the banks have already had? Come on. They don't even tell you about all the cyber attacks they have. You know, your money's only insured to what? $250,000, 250000 right? Or is it 500000 But I wonder, like, you know, like these billionaires... And, and, and trillionaires, and they they have all this money, right? And if something happened to the bank, how they money cover? If they only cover two hundred fifty thousand to five hundred thousand, how is their millions of dollars covered? They must have something different for them. They must have a different FDIC um, insurance for them. They gotta, you know, they gotta. I know Coinbase. You can pay insurance. Um, I think it's twenty nine ninety nine a month. Um, and they'll cover you up to a million dollars. But what about all these other uh, big whales that got billions? And, and something happened to them and they get wiped out. Um, how, how, how is they going to get their money back? So they must have something special. They must have something special. They don't want to give out cash to the people because they can't trace it. Ah, uh, that not, that owes 250 Look up bail in for banks okay i'll look it up so they don't want to give you ca oh yeah they can't trace it right they can't trace where you spending it at uh -huh. that's why i like cash i don't like using them cards unless it's absolutely necessary you right they can't trace your butt <laughs> see some people still like cash i like cash how many how many of y'all say i like cash still 
I'm not a digital person at all. And I'm like one of those people who will hold out to the last minute <laughs> before I go completely digital. I would only go completely digital if you had no choice. And you know, one day that's going to happen. You know, we still here. It's going to happen. Ain't nobody going to take cash no more. It's going to be all digital, guys. And we and you're going to feel funny walking around the earth and you ain't got no cash. All you guys a card <laughs> that anybody could cut off at any given time. <laughs> Call the bank. Cut her off. Cut her off. Block her cards. <laughs> cut them off. Block his card. Right? You go to the supermarket, right? Your transaction has been declined. You call your bank. Uh, we blocked your car because you're not in coherence with the law. That's coming. <laughs> God forbid. It's coming. It's coming. Okay, so cash. Yeah, I like cash. Only way I go digital, if I'm still here, and they go all digital, and they get rid of all cash, and we ain't got no choice. <laughs> but to go digital, we got to go digital. Hey, if the stores ain't going to take the cash. Look, during COVID, they tried that crap. Remember? Remember you go to the store? They weren't taking no cash. They only wanted cards. Talking about because the cash carry germs. I'm um, excuse you. The cards are just as dirty as the cash. <laughs> Look, you putting it inside the little thing, right, with the pen. How many other cards don't win in there with the pen? They got other people fingerprints and DNA and nasty saliva and breath on them. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And they was trying to do that. You know, then they didn't want, then they want to give you no change back. Talking about change shortage. Hmm. <laughs> I really think they was trying to bring that digital dollar in it, but it didn't work. Because <laughs> it ain't time yet. It wasn't time yet. I'm like, yo, nobody don't want to take no cash. Why would that? You know, I'm like, you know what? They trying to do the digital dollar, but it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> but it's going to work in the future very soon. <laughs> it's going to work. And we and we all here, we're going to be like, man, can't have no cash no more. Cash going to be like toilet paper. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to take the cash no more. All they going to take is the debit card, credit card, <laughs> prepaid card. They ain't going to take cash no more. It's going to be like top paper. People going to have all that cash in their house, under their mattress, in their basement, in the dirt. So, you know, people bury their money in the dirt in the back of the house. <laughs> now, if you have silver coins, like, like okay, the quarters and dimes, they're not all silver. They have a little copper in them, but they're still, sil you know, silver. You can always melt those down. The pennies, I guess you can melt those down too, because copper is gonna always be copper's gonna always be worth um money anyway. So you can melt your coins down. But your dollars, they're gonna be like toilet paper. <laughs> Once digital money come in, what the, I bet you what they're gonna do is they're gonna tell us if we still here. All right. We giving you we giving you S amount of time to go to the bank, turn in your dollars, turn in your change. <laughs> so we can apply it to your account, your digital dollar. People are gonna be scrambling, <laughs> trying to get to the bank. You're gonna be seeing lines around the corner because everybody gonna be trying to get that cash in the bank and that silver and chain, you know, before the time expire and then the money will be worthless. That's what's gonna happen. I'm telling you guys, that's what's gonna happen. I, I feel it in my bones. When this happens, they're going to make an announcement. You got S amount of time. You got seven days to get to your local banks and turn in your cash and your coins so it could be credited on your digital dollar account. If you do not do this, you will lose your money and it'll be worthless. How many How many y'all bet that's what's going to happen? Because they can't just turn the digital dollar over because people, everybody going to have cash. Everybody going to have quarters, dimes, and nickels, and pennies. So, so they're going to have to give you a chance to get your money in the bank for to, to go into the digital dollar account. You know what I'm saying? They can control more. Of course they can control more without cash. Yeah, I mean, gold, you always be able to use gold. You'll always be able to use silver because that's the standard, right? You'll always be, you'll be, be able to use gold and silver. And, and, and they, I mean, they really can't. I mean, the Bible says that one day gold and silver is going to be worthless too. <laughs> it's going to be worthless too. So, 
I mean, when the digital dollar come, we'll still be able to use, you know, whoever have gold and silver, you'll still be able to, to trade with that and they won't be able to trace that. But eventually they're going to come after the gold and silver as well and make you turn that in to digital dollar so they could track you. They already tracking us. Your cell phone has a tracking device in it. Your, your computers, some of your appliances have tracking devices in them. Okay. Your debit card. Let me tell you, one time I, I used my card and they declined it. And, I'm, and I called the bank and I was like, why did you do that? Well, you hadn't been in this store since December, which was six months ago. Really? So because I haven't been in the store for six months, you decline my car because you think it's fraud? So that's how you know they watch you. I'm like, no, she didn't say that. She said, you haven't been in this store in six months. I'm like, really? So that's why you decline my car? And you know it's me because I got the pin number. Well, somebody else could have got your pin number. And I'm like, because I haven't been in the store for six months, you decline me? That's how I learned. Back last year, that's how I learned. They tracking you with that chip. Uh-huh. That's how I learned. I said, you know what? I'm not using this card unless I have to. Mm-hmm. That's how you know they tracking your butt. Must learn house joint resolution 192 for gold and silver debt repayment. <laughs> yeah, that's how you know they tracking you. You know, we're in the Brick Brother system. How many of y'all remember? And it's also in my prophecy book on Amazon. But how many of y'all remember I told you this Big Brother system was coming? I saw it in a vision. How many of y'all remember? It's in my prophecy book online. How many of y'all remember I told y'all this Big Brother system was coming? How many of y'all remember it? Let me see. I told y'all. Cash is legal tender. Tender means to put that. Yes, I did. I told y'all this big, I called it the big brother system. And that's what they call it. I saw them watching us. <laughs> I even saw Jones. How many of y'all remember I saw the Jones before the Jones even came? How many of y'all remember that? I saw all kinds. I saw, they, I saw the ones for the military. I saw the ones where they could see through your wall. I don't even know if they created those yet. Where they could see through your wall and see what you're doing. <laughs> I saw drones that everybody, all households could get, and it came to pass. Now we, and I, and I saw the electric cars. Tesla has that. And I also saw the cars that's going to be flying in the air. That's going to be coming soon. And I saw the train rails where the car, where, where these trains, your car will be able to hook up to it. And it can take you where you want to go in the speed of a lightning. Those are coming. I saw designer babies. How many of y'all remember I gave you the prophecy back in 2014 or 15 about designer babies? And you could just go and you could have a boy or a girl. They could look this way, look that way. And they had incubator wounds. They could put them in and, the, and then they could also do it in the womb. That was six that was 2014. So what are we in? Eight years ago. And I, I, I think that's in my book too. I'm not sure. And all of that stuff is coming to pass. I told y'all that China, God told me, and it's on my blog still, China had more gold than anybody. We found that out, right? Found that out. I kept telling y'all for like nine years, China and Russia is bosom buddies. I kept telling y'all, I gave y'all so many prophecies on them. Look it. Look it. Look it. Now China is going to help Russia to get patents for American products. Because <laughs> America is not patent over there in their country. See, let me tell you something. If you're going to get products, right, and you're going to deal with China, you better get a patent on your product because China will steal it from you because I rock Shark Tank. <laughs> it was, a lot of people come on there and be like, yeah, well, we, you know, we did production in China and they stole it right from on us. You know what they'll do? They will patent your stuff in their country and make your patent in your country illegal so if russia does what they're going to do with china you know how much money these um uh, dove and microsoft and all of them starbucks is going to lose because now it's going to be patent in russia you know how much money he see see he finding a way to take money out of your out of everybody's booty that's taking money out of his booty <laughs> That man is a smart man. He's finding a way. So if he goes that route with China and patent these things, oh, he going to get these American companies a run for their money. <laughs> a run for their money. He is finding ways. You hear me? And, and he going to deal with the, the Chinese Wong, you know, so 
So his country may be hurting right now, but not for long if he's going to be dealing with the Wong. So these sanctions really ain't going to do much for him. Look at, look at Iran. Look at all the sanctions they got. I mean, the country, they struggling, but it ain't like they collapsing it. Anyway, that nuke deal is going to be re redone again. I saw Iran's money literally coming out of the dirt, and I told y'all that a couple of years ago. I saw their money literally coming out of the dirt. Iran's money, I saw it literally coming out of the dirt because that's what it's in right now. It's under the dirt. It is buried. It is like worthless. You hear me? <laughs> worthless. You know, and those people over there, they're struggling, right? But I saw that money come out of the dirt. I saw that money come out of the dirt. So if it ain't Biden or Camilla, maybe the next president, but somebody's going to renegotiate with them. And I saw their money coming out of the dirt. And after that renegotiation, soon after, that's when they're going to start coming for America. I'm telling you, soon after, you know, soon after, they're going to come for America. Wow. And stocks, children movies, you can make babies have different color hair. And you can have and choose what to be. Yeah. It's in my, I hope, I hope it is. Who, who has my prophecy book? I know a lot of y'all have it. I can't remember if that designer baby prophecy is in my book or not, but I know y'all remember I gave it to y'all like back in 2014, you know, and then y'all remember that vision I gave you about Iran in 2015. I saw Iran with all these iron gates around them. And um, these iron gates were so high, you could barely see into the country. And then the Lord told me that that means that they were going to become a predominant country. They were going to become very strong. And I had that vision in 2015. So that's like seven years ago. So I believe when they rene renegotiate this new deal with them, that's when it's going to happen. So I believe it's going to be coming soon. Took a bad hit on my finances with a bad accident. I had three years ago had to sell my business. Wow. Back then, just to recover, haven't been able to recover finances. I'm 33. Oh, wow. I pray in the name of sure Jesus that now that you're right with God. See, that happened to you a couple of years ago. I mean, you had a form of God, but you had like a lot of open doors. But now you take God more seriously. You have rededicated your life to God and you, you like run after God now. So the Lord said that you had to go through that suffering to bring you to the point where you are today and where he's going to take you, right? And I literally see like, okay, the devil, the enemy had put a wall up against you. And it's like, every time you try something and it goes and, 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 and it goes forth, it hits this wall and it bounces off. But I literally see God, like, I see your shoe with a hammer. And he's literally like taking the hammer and just knocking down this wall. But he's not doing it all at once because he could. He's doing it little by little by little. So I would say like in the fall months, I know that sounds a ways, but time goes fast. Um, in the fall months, I see finances getting better for you. And God is going to give you another business. He's going to restore a business to you. I don't know if it's the one you sold or it's going to be a new one because um, God says you're an entrepreneur. You're like a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> it's like you want to open this, you want to open that, you want to open this, but you can't right now. So you're going to be like an entrepreneur. So it's going to start with one business. What's your name, Marco? Um, it's going to start with one business, and then it's going to take off from there. So in the fall, things are going to start getting better for you. But I don't see the business coming until maybe next year, sometime next year. And um, I don't know if it's going to be this, what you did a couple of years ago, of God going to give you some new annuities to in, 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 annuities to do. Um, but that's what I hear the word of the Lord say for you. And um, also, Marco, the Lord said you should fast more. Fast more because that's going to help you and your situations as well. And I keep hearing God saying it's going to help you to be more of a fortress in him and make your heart hit heart as a rock as Elijah and make make your eyes like flint, like not taking your eyes off of him. And that's the word of the Lord for you in Yeshua Jesus name. And please always go in prayer and confirm what the prophets tell you in Yeshua's name. <laughs> They're still doing well. Yeah, I ran. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And they've been under sanctions since 2014, right? Right? Yeah. Since Obama was in office. Hello.
We'll be sending a small seat. Need to know which job to select. Have two possible job offers. I see you having three. Um, you want to be going on another interview before you even accept these two jobs. But um, I keep hearing number two, even though you're going to go on another interview or maybe you might not go on a physical interview. It might be something over the phone because I know they do that a lot. Um, but I see the second one. I see the second one. But I also see you, Andrea, doing something on the side at home. I don't know what it is. Maybe a side gig <laughs> or you could be doing some computer work or it could be some little idea that you're going to think of to create and do. And it's going to be like a little side hustle for a while. And then eventually it's going to bloom into something bigger. That's what I see for you. So please take this to the Lord in Yeshua's name. Hi, Apo. Hey, Miss Baker. You're welcome, Jadica. Hi. Who is that? You woke white, white. How you doing? Hi, princess. Oh, yeah. Chase Bank is good. Because that was one of the banks I saw standing. I'm sending finances to bring a building. Oh, I'm needing finances to bring a building up to code to open up my school. Okay, I pray in the name of Jesus that God provides you with that um, money that you need to pay for the code. To bring your building up to code to open up a school. I pray that in Yeshua's name. And I pray you dedicate the school to God. Make him the head CEO. You the acting CEO. So he can bless it in Yeshua's name. You're welcome, Andrea. Yes, I do. Oh, okay. You do life insurance. Okay. I see that going up. If that's what it is. You know, it's like a side hustle. But I see it going up, you know. So, you, so you'll have that and the job. You know, I need finances for rent. I need, okay, I pray God give you finances for your rent and you shoot Jesus' name. 911 prayer, daddy, and give you healing for your back and that God delivers you from Graves' disease. Oh, that's not, that's not good to have. Father, I pray in the name of Shoot Jesus, you just wash them in the blood of Shoot Jesus and just miraculously deliver them from Graves' disease in Yeshua's name. Are you accepting any more people for coaching? No. <laughs> I got too many as it is. Like, both of my coaches, like, like I'm taking up two of my weekends just to do it. Like, one is on Saturday and one is on Sunday. Then the other one's on Saturday. And so, so two weekends in a row. You know, I'm still able to do stuff I need to do, go out and stuff. But then I got to be back home at a certain time <laughs> to do this. So two weekends, you know, and I'm like, dang, what did I get myself into? Because <laughs> I have to split them up because it wears me out because I'm on it five hours or more. So I had to split them up. So I'm, I'm sorry, sweetie. I don't I don't have any, any, any. You know what? Maybe I, well, those people didn't pay me again. There's two people that I let in. Where they send money to the PayPal. And they didn't send me any money to the PayPal for this month. And it's it's 55 bucks. So that's two openings. So um if you want to join the coaching, then you would go through the PayPal and pay the $55 and tell me, but I only got two openings and tell me this is for the coaching for the month of May. And make sure your email is correct. So I can email you the uh, phone number and access code. Because those other two, they didn't pay me again for this month. Because if they wanted this month, May, they were supposed to pay me in April for May. Just like on Patreon, they paid a month before. So they didn't pay me. So I only have two openings. So please, don't 20 of y'all go and pay $55 because I'm going to have to refund you. Because <laughs> there only be two. I'm going to get a promotion on my job and and will and wait i'm going to get a promotion on my job and will my supervisor damage my career why would your supervisor um and why you got your email up there i keep telling people don't be giving out your email like that do you know how many scammers and hackers is out here you need to change your you, you url take your email off for real okay um father in the name of you jesus um What's your real name anyway? Father, in the name of Shoe Jesus, this person, is their boss going to... I heard no. I heard no. That's all, all I heard was no. They're not going to do that. You're welcome. I'm good. 
Well, you got to tell me what you need. Pray for I'm not a psychic. I'm a prophet. <laughs> so you got to tell me. Apostle, I had vision of the date 11, 11, November 11, 22. I'm not sure what that the Lord was trying to show me. Okay, God's vessel. Okay, Father, in the name of you, I know you are God's vessel. Father, in the name of you, Jesus, um, what was you trying, if it's your will to answer, what was you trying to show um, God's vessel? Um, he said an event will take place in the month of November, a big event. So it could be that date. Or it could be a little before, a little after. But he's trying to tell you an event is coming. And to pray, cancel it. That it won't harm anybody, hurt anybody. Like I see an explosion. Like he's showing me a big explosion somewhere. Like a terror attack. Um, I don't know if it's here or in another country. But it's an event. Like a big explosion. Like a terror attack. So pray against that. And then, okay, <laughs> and then he told me around the end of uh, November, why you, he's actually using this word. He said around the pagan Thanksgiving, <laughs> he made sure he put pagan there, okay, for you, uh, God's vessel. He said around the pagan Thanksgiving, you're going to get some good news, a financial news and some other kind of news. So pray and confirm that with him in Yeshua's name. All right, I'm going to have to go like in the next 20 minutes. Hi, Michael. I have been doing music as my passion since my business was were paying off. Then the ask again. Oh, okay, so it's music. Okay, music is one of my little passions too. <laughs> so it's music. Okay, Um. so maybe that's what it is. He's going to let you go back in it. But you know what? When you go back in there, make sure you glorify God. Don't glorify the devil. I mean, it's okay to use like jazz music and stuff like that and um, soft Christian jazz and soft Christian music as I do that. But um, make sure your words are glorifying God. Okay? Make sure your words are glorifying God. Well, I mean, my kingdom, I don't... I don't even, you know, put your name in the box before I answer that again. That's that one with that Gmail. I like to know who you are. I didn't skip you. I just gave you a word. Go back and listen to it. The one with the email. Scorpio, what is this? Scorpio Baby 10. Take that email off and put your name uh, up there, something. I'm praying this summer I will be able Open my little girl's eyes to learn more about the Lord and have fun. And I pray that for you. I come in agreement with you. That's exactly what will happen. Sure name. Leash and bone are connected to Sheba. Oh, okay. So, no, they're two different coins. Because I looked up Dodge Killer, which is Leash. It said $888. Then I looked up bone. And it was $0.57. Cent, and I got the bone. So, they're two separate entities. But maybe they're hooked up to sheep, but they're two separate entities because I got the bone, 57 cent it was. Aw, you're welcome, sweetie. Thank you. Please pray. Let me know when you start up again. Start what up again? <laughs> you lost me there. And you've already had message, don't you? Yeah, Christian, um, the wealth transfer guy, he showed my video. I forgot about it. <laughs> he found it. It must be on my channel somewhere. It was in June where I told people that Cardano was going to go up high and she was going to go up high. And I said she was going to have three runs, and it did. It was in June 2021, so it came to pass. And Cardano had went up. You're welcome. Can you pray that Yah show me how to be better leader for my soul? Okay, in the name of Yeshua Jesus, I pray that God show you how to be a better royalty leader. <laughs> a better royalty leader of the kingdom of God. I pray that God show you how to be a better leader in all aspects of your household and in, in your life. And that God blesses you and your household in Yeshua's name. She's so evil toward me. I'm not, who is this person? Didn't I just, guys, didn't I just prophesy to this Scorpio baby at gmail.com? Didn't y'all just hear me give this person a prophecy? Didn't y'all just hear me say that? And didn't y'all tell hear me to tell tell her to take her Gmail? See, you gonna mess around Scorpio baby at Gmail, whatever, and get yourself blocked. 
That's what you're going to do. Now, you better be paid for calling me evil because I just gave you a prophecy. Obviously, you didn't hear it. So you better be paid for calling me evil. Or God going to come down on you like an eagle on a prey. And you're going to get blocked in your shoe's name. You call somebody evil. See, y'all better be careful who y'all be calling evil. Because your behind will get judged real quick. God don't play when it comes to us babies. I rebuke you in Shua's name. And I ain't evil. I cancel that. Send that back in Shua's name. Huh. You can stake Sheba and earn bone. Oh, you can stake Sheba and earn bone. See, I don't know. I don't, I don't know much about that staking stuff. <laughs> and I am. I definitely don't know nothing about Sheba swap. But that's good. You could do that though. Huh? Music. Oh, you got music coming soon. Good. 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 God may bless you. It's Samuel. Hi, Samuel from Germany. How are you doing? And how's the other Samuel doing? Um, that we talked about. <laughs> I hope he's doing better in Yeshua's name. Tell him I said, God bless him too. I need to move by June, but have no place to move or money. And I just got put on child support, which is good. Dang. Wow. <laughs> well, I pray, Jonathan, in the name of Yeshua Jesus, that God provides the money that you need so that you can move. And I also pray that the baby's mama will have some sympathy and favor on you, and maybe the child support could be lowered in Yeshua's name. Yeah, and it's sad. I, I told you, well, I am putting your business out there, Jonathan, but it's going to be all right. Just 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 have faith. My name is Gosh. I can't even say that last name. <laughs> may you please, may you bless faith. Father, if I'm going to get a job from any of the tons of posts. Okay, in Shu's name. Okay, Father, in the name of Shu Jesus. Um God, God I hope I'm saying your name right. Um I, first of all, I pray you do get a job. And okay. I heard him say you will get a job, but it's been a struggle for you. But you will get a job. You'll get a job. Um, I'm seeing you working in the summer months. So, I mean, I don't know if it's warm where you are because it's warm here. <laughs> but I see it in the summer months. Like, I mean, what we got? May, June. When is summer? June 20th. So, it could be May. It could be June. It could be July. It could be August. But it's going to be warm months when you start work. And, and don't give up. God said don't give up because you're going to get a job in Yeshua's name. And fast, if you if you haven't fast, fast because that's going to help you. And you can go to my blog. It's prophetess Rosalind Solomon dot .com. or go on my YouTube and click on the about button, and you'll see it. Or you could look under my videos, and it could be there. And it has open heaven prayers and other prayers, financial prayers, and prayers for jobs. So you should at least fast a day or two when you do those in Yeshua's name. And I pray, Charlie Davis, that God gives you direction in your finances and that God blows a fresh wind in your finances. And um, Charlie, I just hear for you, Charlie Davis, that you, you need to release. You need to tithe more. That's what I heard God say. You need to tithe more. You need to sow more into the kingdom. He said, because everything, something must go up before something comes down. So you need to tithe more. And he said, if you tithe more, your finances will come up more. And he's giving me the book of Malachi for you to read. I think it has like five or six chapters. He's giving me that book for you to read in Yeshua's name. And fast while you're reading it in Yeshua's name. Hello, Apostle. My name's Kevin. And I would like to ask if, if I will be buying a house. If you're going to be buying a house soon. Well, I pray in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, God blesses you with a house, but... Um, I was supposed to have a house by now, but God told me to wait because it's very, very expensive out there. So, Father, will he be buying, will Kevin be buying a house anytime soon? I heard yes, but not now. I heard yes, soon, but not now. Yes, soon, but not now. <laughs> In Jesus' name. So, yes, you will, soon you will, but not now. Can you pray for peace for me? Can you come to agree with me? It's like someone, okay, I pray 
Whatever peace that's being taken away from you, that God replaces it and gives it back to you. And whatever's drawing your peace away from you, we rebuke it and cancel it right now with the blood issue of Jesus. And Father, deal with that entity or whatever it is. Deal with it and judge it in Yeshua's name. You're welcome. Well, I passed my real estate exam for New Jersey. I lost my job because of the VAX mandate, and I'm planning on going into this field. Oh, your job didn't call you back because a lot of these jobs dropped it. Probably, you know what? It might be. It's probably better for you in the real estate field because it's pretty hot right now. <laughs> um, so, Father. Okay, I heard the Father say, um, who's that? Um, if you study hard, you will pass. <laughs> if you study hard, you will pass. That's what he said. So make sure you study hard. Study hard. Be hardcore. Study. And fast a day or two. That always is good. That's not from God. That's just from my spirit. But fasting is always a great thing. So fast a day or two to help you pass the exam and study hard. If you study hard, you will pass in Yeshua's name. And I heard the word um, for you, the real estate person, um, the word lucrative. And are you getting a new car on um, the person about the real estate test? Because I see you in a new car. I don't know. It's like a, a used car, but it's, it's, it's not that used. It's kind of new. So let me know. Could you ask God when he will get me out? I already told you, Sam. I told you that on Instagram already. Go back and look at those um things we talked about. I had a dream that I spoke to a storm to leave. And the amen. That's the power of Lucky Elijah. Maybe there was some kind of storm brewing. It could have been a spiritual storm for your life or a physical storm coming in your area. And it would have been bad. So God had you rebuke it in the spirit realm. So praise the Lord for that. That's funny. My birthday is 11 22, and I'm always catching the clock. <laughs> I have been seeing. Well, I got a book um, called Biblical Interpretations. It has a lot of numbers in it and meanings because I can't remember them all. Praise God, Pastor Grace, seeing you. Do you see any prosperity for me? Now, why would you ask me if I see any prosperity for you? Am I like looking at your life right now? <laughs> what you should have said was, can you ask God, is there any prosperity coming from me? Because how can I see anything for you when when you, you just weren't there? You know what I mean? You got to reword your stuff. So Father, in the name of you, Jesus, um, this person, I ain't even going to mess up your name. <laughs> the last name, Banks. Um. Is there any? Oh, thank you all for your donations. Bless your hearts. Um, bless you sevenfold, doublefold. May God multiply it immediately in Yeshua's name. Um, do you see any change in this person's finances? The last name is Banks. Um, all I heard him say was he didn't say nothing about prosperity. He just said that your financial situation will change before this year is out, before 2022 is out. It will change. In Yeshua's name. And I'm also hearing God say this for a lot of y'all. Most of y'all do tithe and sow seeds, but you're not consistent. I'm hearing God say a lot of your financial issues is because you have to be consistent with the kingdom. Right? You you have to make sure you're sowing into the a kingdom that's of the Lord for one. Right? And you have to make sure you're sowing and, and tithing where you're getting fed. Right? Um, And... Sometimes you got to release money in the atmosphere. Like you be in a store, you pay for somebody's groceries or whatever they buy it. Or you see somebody in the street and you just tell them, Jesus told me to get this to you. You know, if God leads you to it, you know, if you know a family member that's in need, um, you sell your ties to this ministry, you know, we, if I'm the one that's feeding you, right? Um, if you're getting fed more somewhere else, then that's where you got to sell. But if you're getting fed from me some, you, you sell here too, right? But the Lord is saying I just keep hearing him say people got to start releasing. And he keeps telling me he doesn't care if it's a dollar, five dollars. If that's all you have is a dollar because God know what you got. Right. So if that's all you could. So it's a dollar or five dollars. <clears throat> the Lord says, does it do it? And if you don't have like PayPal cash out, you go, you always could go and get a money order for a dollar. Or you could just send a dollar as itself wrapped up in something or five dollars. I'm just saying that's for people who don't have money. If you have money, 
then you ask God what you should tie, you know, weekly or what you should sow, you know. And he he's telling me that uh, he's about to release money to a lot of people. I don't know if it's going to be through crypto, through stocks, or how it's going to be, or he's just going to have people flood you with money or some money's coming you don't know about. You know, I, I, I mean, God is not a gambler and he's not into the lotto, but I'm saying like, I would, I don't, I don't gamble and I never will. I used to do that, but you never know. I'm just using an example. He might like, you might hear his voice say, go get you a lotto ticket, go get you a pick six. I'm just saying. Because there's a lot of Christians that, that gamble and God bless them with millions and they give to the churches and stuff. So I'm just saying, he's just putting this in my head. I'm not saying to gamble because gambling is not of the Lord. <laughs> Don't go on. Well, Apostle said, you know, I should go buy a pick six. Nah, I ain't saying that. Apostle said, go get a scratch. I, I, nope, not saying that. I'm just using it for an example. He's going to be giving people money in all kinds of ways, right? He's going to be like transporting people's lives like overnight. That was in one of my words, right? So, and the people that this is going to happen to are the faithful givers, the faithful sowers. Even sinners out there are going to get it because they give to organizations or this or that, right? And in the books of Proverbs, it says, um, the more you give, the more you receive. The less you give, the less you receive. So the Lord is telling me a lot of y'all need to start releasing tithes and seeds, no matter what, you know, God knows your pockets. You know what I'm saying? You have to, you, you can't go through life and not give out. Even if you're not a child of God and you don't sow to a church, sow to adoption agency, organization. That's what a lot of these people do. And that's still giving. You know, you have to be a giver to be a receiver. You have to get like our Messiah. What did he do for us? He gave us the biggest donation, <laughs> the best gifts. He, uh, he gave us the blood of God, which is God, the Holy Spirit and him. He gave us the blood of God. Then on top of that, he gave us his life. Biggest gift and donation. Even he had to give in order for God to receive us back. In order for us to be blessed to have a life with God, to be reconciled back to God, even God himself had to give his most precious of precious, which is Yeshua. And Yeshua gave his precious life for us. So even God had to give to get us back. You know, so you have to give in order to receive. You know, you can't keep coming on here, apostle, pray for my finance. You know, and then I know some of y'all are very faithful. And some of y'all saw a lot and your finances have got better, but it hasn't gotten to where you want it to be. Give God time. It will get there. Some people are like, I sow every week. And God knows that. But you can't just sow because you want God to give you money. You have to sow out of the goodness of your heart. And you have to be a cheerful giver. Like I have a book and I keep saying I'm going to publish it. And I just haven't done it yet. It's called A Good Steward. And it's a blessing. When it was on um, Amazon, it blessed many people. And you know, I, I really think I'm going to get on that book um, sometime this month because I'm about to publish the uh, the encyclopedia prayer book I have, 300 something pages. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do that Good Stewart book because when it was out there, people, it really blessed people. And it teaches you how to be a good steward step by step. It's all Bible based and principle, and it works. And then I have another book called Bible Money Treasure The Secret to the Kingdom of Wealth has helped many people and it has prayers in it. It gets you job. It'll bring money to you real quick. God gave these things to me years ago and I tested out on myself and family. Every time somebody needed a job, I send them a prayer. Boom, they get a job. Every time I needed money to pay a bill back in the day, boom, it will come. So go and get that book, Bible Money Treasures, The Secret to Kingdom Wealth. It's on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. And then when the Good Steward book come out, I'll let you guys know. But we as kingdom children, even me, even the leader, we have to give. We cannot let a week go by without giving something. Even if it's just a dollar. If that's all you got, so what? Look at the lady in the Bible. All she had was a penny. And, and she became a rich woman. And y'all said to the Pharisees, she has given more than y'all could ever give. She gave from her heart. She gave her last. God is going to bless you, you know? But don't be looking for him to do it overnight. If he want to do it overnight, he will. If he want to take his time, he will. And then sometimes you look at your heart. He's like, oh, they just sowing because they want money. 
So until they start sowing for the goodness of their heart, I'm going to hold it back. Do you know how many people's stuff is pending? The Lord was telling me so many people's stuff is pending in the spiritual room. It's already there. All your prayers, all your needs, all your finances, car, husband, spouse, babies, uh, businesses, uh, salvation for your families. It's pending. Say this prayer with me right now. Find in the name of Yeshua, HaMashiach, King Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I come covered in the blood of Jesus, and we give you glory and praise, for you are worthy. You are the holies of holies. Bless your heart, Father. Mommy, we want you, Jesus. Father, anything that's pending in the spiritual realm for me, please show me why it's pending. If I need to repent, if I need to release a seed, or if I re need to release a tithe, or if I need to help somebody on the street, what I, a family member, whatever it is, Father, show me. If it's a, a legal right the enemy has, if it's a sin I'm still doing, I don't know about. If it's something I need to repent for, I can't remember. If it's anything about my personality, characteristics, whatever it is, Father, show me. So that whatever's being held up in the spiritual realm for me and anyone connected to me, may be released and unpinned and released into my hands and into my bosom, into my heart, into my life, my soul, and my spirit. So that I may enjoy the fruits of you like the Bible says. So I may enjoy the fruits of you and enjoy the fruits of my life. And so that I can be a huge pillar in the kingdom of God and help to hold the kingdom up and bring the kingdom to many through finances, through feeding them, helping them, sheltering them, teaching them, whatever it is I need to do so I can bring the kingdom forth in you. Daddy, check my heart. I'm for real, daddy. I ain't just saying this to enrich myself, daddy. I'm for real. I'm for real, daddy. Although I know it's going to enrich me, I'm going to enrich many. As many as you want me to enrich, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to fuss, fight, or argue. I'm going to do it. If you make us billionaires, millionaires, hundred trillionaires, and you tell us to give a hundred thousand away, a million away, even a billion away, and we have it to do, we will do it. In Yeshua's name. Might be a little hard with that billion, but, <laughs> but we'll do it, Daddy. And Yeshua, Jesus' name, sealed with the blood of Yeshua to Xfinity. And I cover this with the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, to Xfinity, which is you, Father, my room, and Yeshua, sealed in your signature, signature with the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, for eternity. So shall this come to pass. As your apostle has spoken, so shall it come to pass. In Yeshua's name. Oh, snap. Guess what, guys? Oh, I see apples and oranges. Why are you showing me fruit? <laughs> I see apples and oranges and all kinds of greeneries just popping up right before my face. Uh -huh. You know what that means? The fruit and the greenery, prosperity and goodness, <laughs> finances. <laughs> so that prayer, that prayer does something. And Father, nothing in the spirit room will block that prayer. From the east, south, north, and west, in the spirit room, on this earth, in this earth, under this earth, in the forest, in the water, in another planet, in another rim. I don't care where it's coming from. Nothing will stop this prayer. I put the angels all over this prayer. All over. Put our angels all over this prayer, Father. Covered with the blood of Shua Jesus. And it has reached the rock that has busted and the sit is in your nostril. And you got the gold ball ready overflowing into the sacks for the angels to bring them to us in shoes name now don't y'all mess up don't let the devil make you mad <laughs> don't let the devil make you say stuff out your mouth so it's just like just like that lady when the angels are bringing her stuff she got mad started cursing angels put their head down took that stuff right back say god don't let me miss my stuff daddy don't let me miss my stuff that's being unpinned don't let me miss it daddy. don't let the devil dupe me out of my stuff don't let the devil trick me daddy don't let the devil do anything physically or spiritually to make me miss my stuff daddy Please, Daddy. Please, if I do something wrong, let me know immediately so I can repent. In Yeshua's name, seal with the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, to infinity, which is you, my Maru, and Yeshua, seal your signet, signature with the blood of Yeshua, Jesus. <laughs> Bless God. What, what? <laughs> we just released some stuff in the spirit room. What? We just released some stuff. <laughs> oh, God is good. Say it with me. Hashtag. Say, Yah is good. Sing it with me. Put it in the hashtag. Y'all is good. I'm going to try and rap. No, I ain't going to do that. <laughs> I can rap, but I ain't going to do that. Say, sing it with me. Come on, say, 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 y'all is good. He is releasing stuff in the spiritual realm. He's unpending all the goodness. He's unpending all the goodness for us. He is a mighty God. He is a loving God. Oh, I didn't know what I was going to do for your people today. 
But I thank you, Father God, that you unpending things. Just sing with me a hashtag, y'all is a mighty God. Sing it with me, y'all is a mighty God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shua, yeah, 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 y
I know. Where's y'all people at when I'm giving you words? I, I, I just don't get it. I look, I can't. Where's the mic? I'm throwing it. I can't. <laughs> I, I got to go like in two minutes. Is my phone. I know you was Scorpio lady. I, I forgive you. It's my former sister-in-law, which. Okay. Father, in the name of you, Jesus, is Diana Moore's sister. No, she's just evil. <laughs> the Lord said no. She's just evil. Everybody's not a witch. Everybody's not a witch, guys. She's just evil. So pray for her. Apostle, I thank you for praying for my leg and knees. It's a little better. Glory to God. Testimony. God made her knees and legs better. And I pray he continue to make them way better in Yeshua's name. I can't explain reincarnation. I got so many teachings on here about it. Go listen to them. And I got books. Go on Barnes and Nobles and buy my reincarnation book. Put in Apostle Ross and Solomon books and look for them. I'm not going to sit up here and explain that. Come on now. I got so many teachers on here and books. Then you go listen to that, Abba girl. Go buy my books. That's the best thing. Go to Barnes and Nobles. Um, it's one on there, Seven Levels of Karma. And then the other one, your past is catching up to you. Go, go. And then I have um Secret True Life book one, two, three, and one, two, and three on there. That also talks about reincarnation. All right. Hi, my name is Rafine. I would like prayer for my two adult children. Um, well, what do you want me to pray for? You didn't even tell me, so I just have to pray general. Father, whatever she needs prayer for for her two adult children and her three grandchildren, I pray you give it to them, and I pray for their salvation. I come, pray they get right with you and come come to you, and, and that you keep them healthy and protected in Yeshua's name. All right. Did you read my minds about son Terrence and the dream I had of him being in the army fatigue, his, his healing me a job and... No, I didn't see that. I haven't been back on Facebook since yesterday, and I probably ain't going back on it again until tomorrow, Saturday. But I'll, I'll look at it. Thank you so much. You bless, bless you. Please, what is Susanna? Okay, Susanna, yeah. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, Su Susanna, what is Susanna's calling, Father? What do you want her to do in the kingdom? Okay, I heard two things. A fin a you, you, you're meant to be a financier and an evangelist. You're meant to be a financier. What's, what is a, a, fi a financier is someone who gives out money to different ministries. So that means that God, one day in the future, is going to equip you monetarily wise and financially wise to be able to help ministries that he sent you to help. But I also see you evangelizing and I see a women's ministry with you because you yourself have been through some hurts in your heart. I don't know if it was men or, you know, just life in general, but um, you have been through a lot of hurt and God is, is getting you through it. And he's still healing you to this day and he's going to, and he wants to use what you went through to help other women in your situation. So I see you evangelizing. I'm sure you will be evangelizing to men and children too, but he's more so going to give you a heart for females and you shoot his name. Okay, I got to go, guys, because sis will be here in a minute. He wrote an objection, and we prayed that he will get his job. Okay, I pray. I come in agreement that he get his job, too. And he, I don't, I don't, got, I don't have nothing for being out. All the prophecies I've given about coins, just go look for the videos. <laughs> That's all I can say. I don't have nothing for Beyonce today. That's God. What? Huh? What plan he has for me this year? Oh, uh, my name is Ro Rowena. Okay. Um, oh, okay. First thing I heard before I even asked him, he he said, Rowena, you have to get up, get up and move. Like get up and go out. Get up and get you some tracks from somewhere because they free online. You know, get up and go out and give out tracks and talk to people about God. I mean. I was in the supermarket the other day and people was letting me get close to them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to tell y'all this. So I'm going to share this. Pat teased me. Then I got to go. We went to the supermarket uh, a couple of days ago. And Pat was thinking about getting some chicken that was already cooked. So we was already talking to the guy because we know him well because he knows us from coming in and getting chicken for Pat, right? 
And <laughs> this man, I just felt his spirit come by me. And this man just came behind me walking and I heard his voice. Hello, how are y'all doing? And I'm like, oh, oh, we fine, right? So nothing, right? So me and Pat, Pat loves strawberry shortcake, right? And the kind she like is usually $12 cake. And it's not the time they have it on sale for two forty nine, but this time they had it on sale for five forty nine. So I noticed everywhere I walked, me and Pat, he's following us. And then when when we stop, he stops. I said, "Daddy, what's up with this dude?" Right. And so I said, "Daddy, I'm going to show Pat her favorite cake purposely to see what he happens with him." So lo and behold, they had her cake on sale for five forty nine, and she wanted up getting some. And of course, I got a piece. <laughs> it was good, right? And so when I did that, he stopped. So then he said in a real soft voice, he said, excuse me. And I turned around and I said, yeah. He was like, what's your name? I was like, why you want to know my name? <laughs> and he was like, because I want to know your name. So I said, my name is Rosalind. I was like, what's yours? He was like, I'm Carl. I was like, okay. He was like, can I have your number? I'm like, no, I'm taken. <laughs> And when I came home, I told daddy, I said, daddy, I ain't lying. I am taken. I belong to Yah and you and Mama Ruth. And I'm married to Yeshua. And even when you do send my husband, I still belong to Yeshua. Both of us going to belong to him. So I ain't lie. And daddy said, no, you didn't. <laughs> but then Pat was like, oh, what is going on? She said, she said, I'm used to men coming for you. But lately here, I don't know. She said, Hmm, Mr. Man must be about to come. And, and the devil is throwing in his, his counterparts, the counterfeit. I was laughing. So then we started talking to this lady and she let us get all close to her. I know it's people letting us get close to them now. You know, it's like, stay away, COVID, you know, it's going away. And then they said officially on the news that COVID is gone officially. <laughs> but they still want to fight to wake, make you wear a mask. <laughs> but it says go. But and but now they fighting in New Jersey and New York on the train to have one little cart for anybody who want to wear a mask. See, in New Jersey, I already got a cart for quiet. If you want quiet time, you can't play no music or not. But now they want to put a cart on the trains <laughs> for people who want to wear a mask. Come on, let go of it. Take do like Patty Labelle. Take it off and just throw it <laughs> because. They don't help you. I mean, people who still was wearing the mask still got COVID. Look at our president, Vice President Camilla Harris. They said she got COVID. She wore a mask all the time. And I believe she got the shot, right? She still got COVID. How many people we know that wore the mask still got COVID? How many people we know that got the shot still got COVID? Really? So it proves ain't nothing invincible but God. God is the only one that can make you invincible. And all of you who have gotten COVID, God saved your life. Even me, I got uh, the, 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 that bad flu and, 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 and blood clogs, you know, and he saved my life. So only God can really protect you from these things, you know, and the people who have never gotten COVID, that's because God protected them, whether they're heathen or not, God protected them. And then the people who got COVID and survived, they're immune to it now. They're immune to it. But then there's some people that got COVID a couple of times. So, I mean... That is really going to protect you, but God Almighty Himself, nobody's going to protect you. Even if you get COVID or get any kind of virus, it's, if you live, it's because God allowed you to live. He didn't let the enemy take you by using sickness because the enemy will use sickness to take a person. So, anybody who got COVID, any kind of viruses, the B2, Ebola, whatever, all that stuff that's out there, you know, um, Delta virus, whatever. Anybody who lived through that is because God allowed you to. So many people got blood clogs because of the shots, because of the viruses, and live. Why? Because God allowed you to, whether you're wicked or not. Those who have passed away, God allowed it for his own purpose and reasons. Maybe it was time for them to go, or their cup had filled up, they never repented, and it was, and no blood was on them, so they had to go. So everything leads back to God. All roads lead back to God, whether you're wicked or not. So if you are a person who survived COVID, survived blood clots, survived juice that was put in you, survived the Delta, all of that, you still here because God chose you to be here. He said, no, devil, you ain't taking that one. I got purposes for that one. 
family members. I got purposes for them. You know, even your family members who got the juice. You know what I'm saying? And they're going against you. They still here, right? They still here. Some people got the juice in their arm and died while the juice was in their arm, right? So if your family's still here, they got the juice, right? And they're exercising you. They don't want to be, be bothered. Don't want to believe you. They still here because God sees something in them. So just pray that they come into the truth and that God cleanse them up. And if anything has been changed in them DNA, that God bring it back. In Yeshua's name. That's all you got to do until they come into it on their own. You know what I'm saying? So anybody that's still alive from all of this stuff that we've been going through for the past two years, going on three years, if you still alive and your family member still alive, it's because God chose you to be alive, whether you wicked or not. Because obviously he's trying to give you a chance to get right or even he see you going to get right. You know, and he told the devil, no, you can't have that one. Look how many people died in car accidents in the past two and a half years. Look how many people been kidnapped, stolen, trafficked, killed, finding people in bushes. Didn't I tell y'all three years ago, God said he's going to clean house. When I told y'all about these viruses coming and, and we was going to see more murder than we ever seen in our life. Didn't I tell you he said he's going to use it to clean house? Some was going to be going home to him. Some was going to be going to the abyss. And then he was going to use it to straighten out people, bring people to him, get the church right. He doing it. I told you all these churches going to close down. Look, look, all churches gone. Gone. All these churches despise online ministry. Look at all. Look, 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 look at how many on them now because they need to survive. Because ain't nobody coming in the church hiding. So they got to come on here to get some time to survive. All that stuff came to pass. So don't play with God. And don't play with his prophets neither. All right. So I got to go. <laughs> See, I know a lot of y'all had COVID because I prayed for a lot of y'all. God healed you. One person, her mama had COVID and she lived for six extra weeks so she could get right with God. And then God took her. Come on. We got a good God, a good daddy. And it don't matter what kind of persecution that we go through. We know the God that we serve. And we know if we last to the end, like it says in the word, we will be crowned with the glory of God. And we will be with him for life, for eternity, in Yeshua's name. All right? So I got to go. So I see. That's right, Sophie. <laughs> Yama. All right. So I got to go. So I'll see y'all soon when church time come. If God don't send me back on here before then. Remember, it's either going to be Friday or Saturday. I don't know. All right? So just look out. And I don't know what time. I really don't. <laughs> so just look out. All right? That's right. Thank the Lord. So I see y'all soon. And bless everybody who sold a seed or tied. Shalom in shoes name. <laughs>